What's the word, y'all? At this point, I just be using this channel to like, to like bounce ideas off of y'all to see what y'all thinking. Here, here's the newest one. Um, and it might be my worst take, my boldest take of all time. All of what we just watched for the last couple months, I don't even know if it mattered. No, obviously there's the enjoyment factor. That's why, that's why we, we watch the game because we love the game of basketball. But I mean, in the sense of trying to predict or trying to figure out who's gonna win this championship, I don't know if the 82 game sample size is enough and that is crazy. Before I explain it even more, uh, today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Hit the link in the description and download the Prize Picks app and use Kokanee so they can match your deposit up to $100. Now, I've been playing Prize Picks with the NBA all season long, but now I'm doing it with the MLB since the season is there. I've been doing a lot of no run first innings and it's super fun to root uh, a root for pitchers. Roof of pitching in the first inning, and then the rest of the innings, roof of the hitters. Anyway, you pick between two or six of your favorite or least favorite athletes across the NBA, MLB, NFL, League of Legends, Counter-Strike, whatever. You pick something like points, rebounds, assists, total hits, and you look at the number, and you decide if you think the athlete is going to have more or less than that number. And again, it's very, very simple. You can create an entry in a matter of seconds. It's just you versus the numbers. My entry, I didn't hit on all five of my picks. That's not a problem because with prize picks, if you have an entry between three and five, you can pick power play or flex play play and in this case I picked flex play so even though four out of my five are right I still walk out in the green so hit the link in the description down the price fix app and use cocaine so they can match your deposit up to a hundred dollars all right so we made videos in the past couple weeks talking about the recipe the formula if you will to become an NBA champion you have to be top 10 in offense top 10 in defense you have to have like 53 wins minimum you had to have a player that's considered top 10 like it was a lot of different stuff and I mean the formula at least to this point, has been almost perfect in predicting who the NBA champion is. But this season is like no other. Let's look at the out west. Five through eight. All have 38 losses on the season. Five through eight. And in a lot of situations, thinking about five through eight doesn't, doesn't matter. Because usually the championship is won by one of the top three teams, right? But five through eight in this case are the Clippers, the Warriors, the Lakers, and the Pelicans. And this 82 game sample size may not have mattered because I, listen, all right, I'm gonna I'm say it and then, listen, I don't even know if I even truly believe it myself. But a team like the Lakers, and I'm not just saying that because they beat up on the Houston Rockets tonight, but a team like the Lakers can blow out every single formula that I mentioned two weeks ago or earlier in the video. Because again, if you look at the Lakers overall stats for the season, uh, they're 20th in offense. They're 12th in defense. They're two games over 500. That don't sound like a team that should be in the conversation of contenders, but then a whole roster is completely different from February. Now, if you like Kenny, why don't you just look at the look at the statistics from February, from the trade deadline? Well, D'Angelo Russell missed a lot of time. Uh, LeBron James missed a lot of time. So I can't even look at those numbers. That sample size to say, ah, that's, that's the team we're gonna get. So I, I'm using, basically just using the eye test. Which again, <laughs> is what people had to do way before analytics were like this big thing. So I ain't really complaining too much. But like, I'm now using the eye test more than any other time to determine how I feel about a certain team. Which is kind of kind of refreshing, you know what I'm saying? And the Lakers, again, not because they beat the Houston Rockets today, but the Lakers look like real contenders to me. And I think that is because they, <laughs> they make sense. You know, some of the other versions of the Lakers early in the season didn't make sense. You had LeBron James and Anthony Davis with no shooting. Ah, that don't sound like a team that's going to do anything. And now they have LeBron James and Anthony Davis with some shooting, with some defenders. Like, again, looking at the smaller sample size, in the last two weeks, the Lakers have had the fifth-ranked defense in the eighth-ranked offense. In the last 16 games that Anthony... See, this is what we got to start doing. In the last 16 games that Anthony Davis is suited up, they're the number one defense in basketball, and he's averaging 30. This is the version of Anthony Davis they traded for. Last year, undoubtedly, there's not a single person on the earth that can convince me that last season wasn't a disappointment for Anthony Davis. And now this year, he been all letting the bag of chips. Because in my mind, Anthony Davis, as far as talent goes, should be in the conversation with the Giannis's, the Embiid's, and the Jokic's as the greatest power forward slash centers in basketball. And last year, he was good, but he wasn't Anthony Davis good. And now he's looking like, as far as statistics go and all of that, he's looking like the Anthony Davis that we thought was going to be a multiple-time MVP. The guy that we thought was going to be a multiple-time defensive player of the year, he's looking like that. And Braun, after the first game against the Bulls where he came back and he didn't look completely like himself, has looked back physically in shape. 
And then they got people like Austin Reeves that will come out and have a bad game like tonight and still have, what, 18 and 6? That, that was a bad game for him. And they can have these contributing players, whether it be a Vanderbilt out of nowhere giving you some great performances or a game where Rui Hachimura is out of the lineup for four straight games and then he come out of nowhere and give you 20. Like, I'm starting to believe in the LA Lakers as a legitimate title contender and every single advanced stat and every single thing that I usually would use to, like, verify this tells me otherwise. But I, but I kind of believe it, man. I kind of believe it. A few months ago, um, after the trade deadline, Kevin O'Connor put together the post-trade deadline NBA power rankings where he, he basically ranked what teams he thinks is going to win a championship. You got the Wimby Watts, yada, yada, yada. You don't care about this. You want to care. You only care about the true, true contenders. And in this, he deemed the 76ers, the Lakers, the Warriors as uh, true finals contenders. And then he had the favorites as the Nuggets, the Suns, the Celtics and the Bucks. Now, I'll be honest with you, Kevin, because I, I, I'm always going to be a straight shooter. When, you, when I wrote, read this article two months ago, I thought you were insane by having the Lakers that high because at that point, the Lakers were a sub-500 team. They weren't, they weren't good. It wasn't just me. Um, how the F of the 13th seed, a true title contender, not even the Lakers fans believe that. Kevin O'Connor's content is worse and worse. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Uh, Lakers are at six. is absolutely insane. Sorry. And again, in that moment, I had this opinion as well. But, but, a lot has changed in two months. They look like a well-oiled machine. And if Anthony Davis is going to play at this level, and we know what LeBron is, you know what I'm saying? Now, when I picked them to come out the West right now, there's one team, and, and this video was going to be titled, Are We Overthinking It? With a picture of Kevin Durant. Be, 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 because the, the Suns and the Kevin Durant era are 6-0. and And today he had 35-5-5 against the 35-5-5-2 um, um, against the Thunder. And now that I'm thinking about it, I still might title it, Are We Overthinking It? Because that's that's what I'm doing right now. Here's another stat. This was from Stat News. Um, Kevin Durant is 19-1 and one in his last 20 games. So are we overthinking it? <laughs> is this team undoubtedly the favorite, at least to come out of the West? Now, I've said it since the moment the trade went down that I saw them as the, as the team that was going to win the Western Conference. Now, a lot of things have changed. Kevin Durant missed some time. And, and, and when him missing time... We thought that when he did come back, he was only gonna have five or six games left of the NBA season. I guess that's relatively true. Um, but we all gave Kevin the benefit of the doubt because we've never seen him come back from an injury and not look like Kevin. But at first game, since he came back, he didn't look like Kevin. It was a little bit scary. He shot like five for 18 from the field. And what, he didn't make his first basket until like halfway through the second quarter. It was a bit weird. Uh, but then you get a performance like today where he was unstoppable. So maybe we are overthinking it. Maybe this whole video is me leading up to saying, oh, I just talked about the Lakers being contenders, but the Suns. It's the Suns. Then also, the Denver Nuggets crew just beat the Warriors. It was at home, and you know the Warriors don't win on the road like that. You know, they've been a little bit better, but not like that. I mean, at, at the Ball Arena, that's what it's called, right? They just beat up on the Warriors without Jokic. So, the, again, are we overthinking it? I think we are. Um, but in the best possible way, I think. Because if you ask me right now, who do I have winning the Western Conference? I'm going to say the Phoenix Suns, and again... That, that's every ball been because it has changed, but the, the Phoenix Suns are my team. Um, this this is, this can be concerning um, if you're going against the Phoenix Suns because the five-man lineup of Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Josh Kogi, Kevin Durant, and DeAndre Aiden are in the 97th percentile when it comes to point differential. Um, the offense is not as elite as you would have wanted to, but the defense is in the 99th percentile. Bro, Halliburton, Matherin, Heald, Neesmith, and, and Miles Turner is the greatest offensive lineup in basketball by a large margin. But seeing the team in, the, in, the, in this percentile, it's kind of scary. You saw down the stretch today how good Kevin Durant can be on the defensive side of the ball, getting some big time uh, blocks and stops and stuff. So uh, are we overthinking it? Probably. And I think that's okay because recently we've had so many years where we didn't have to think at all. It was like... Cavs, Warriors, all right, let's play 82 games, even though we all know what's going to happen and how we're going to get there. So the fact that we do have to think so much is kind of cool. Um, I think it's kind of happening on the Eastern Conference side, too, because the Boston Celtics blew out the, the Milwaukee Bucks by 106 points. The, the, the Bucks played five games and seven nights leading up to that, but still, like, they beat them by a ton, beat the brakes off of them, and then took the, the tiebreaker in that. You know, they're undefeated against the Bucks and the 76ers. You know, and I've been bucks, bucks, bucks all season long. So maybe we're overthinking that. You know who should probably thought a little bit more? Now the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, before they pulled the trigger on that trade. And Kyrie Irving is not the problem. Kyrie Irving is not the problem. Um, it's the, it's a lot of different stuff. <laughs> I cannot believe how they keep digging themselves deeper and deeper and deeper into this hole. They're a full game back 
with just a couple games left. They got Sacramento in a couple nights, then the Bulls, then the Spurs. The Spurs should be an undoubted, undoubtedly be a win, but you never really know. Um, the best thing that happened to them is the fact that the OKC Thunder have had a few losses and the Pelicans have also had a few losses, so they're still in the hunt. OKC have the Warriors, Utah, Memphis to close out the year, and that is a that is a tough way to close it when you need to win a few of those to keep your spot. So I said the Pelicans. I meant to say the, the Timberwolves, who had another bad loss, by the way. Um, they got Brooklyn, San Antonio, and then the Pelicans. I, I mean, this last week and a half is going to be crazy for the seeding stuff, but we'll keep track of it as it go down.